Hi YouTube, Rosa Anya here. Today I will be reviewing this video radio that I found in Poundland for £10. Exploring the box, we can see that it claims to have shortwave from 5.9 to 18 megahertz, so I just had to try it. It looks like its model number is 492700. Opening the box, we find a micro USB cable, instruction manual telling us a little bit about the radio and the radio itself. Let's have a little listen and see what it's like on FM. <laughs> It. I just don't, I, I just can't think what the answer would be. Sit down and put it on. I was once again in the back of our vehicle. Well, M, is that playing with knives? <laughs> Classicfm.com tonight. <laughs> to go. Number five is the UK. It's a... I don't remember us so long. Usually £35 legal stuff applies. Please! <laughs> you don't be this morning, Sam. Money to stay in business. So if cash flow is tight right now... I'm uh, very impressed with the FM performance without even extending the aerial. On the front, there is a clock, four buttons for play, pause, back, skip and mode and two separate rotating dials, one for tuning and the other for power and volume. There is a battery LED, micro USB charging port and a 3.5 input jack on the side with also this rubber wrist strap. At the back, there is a rather small aerial that folds away. There are some specifications on, and there is the battery door, which curiously is uh, screwed shut. On the other side of the radio, there's this handy torch and it's quite bright. And lastly, on the top, lies the lights on and off switch, the USB input, the micro SD card slot and the selector between digital, FM, medium wave and short wave. It looks uh, quite nice and retro, doesn't it? Now to test it. First up is the Bluetooth input. This was easy to set up. All I had to do was slide the top switch to MP3 and on my phone, Vido Radio appeared. Next is a combined USB and speaker test. I'll be using a USB drive loaded with Sin Collis Melodia in both original and AM quality versions. The AM version helps to bring out severe distortion. During this test, I discovered that this radio has a memory for the USB. It resumes playback where it left off as soon as the USB stick is reinserting and it even works after powering it on and off. It's quite a nice feature. Luckily, there isn't much noticeable distortion. Now for a short wave. Firstly, here is a recording from 9420, Voice of Greece. Hey, 
It uh, sounds quite good, doesn't it? But it has a major problem, which you'll hopefully notice in this next clip from RNEI. This feeder seems to use a heavy gain ducking system during fades and weak signal moments, which is quite unpleasant and fatiguing to listen to for long periods. It's rather sad as it's otherwise a great performer for the price. I've also noticed that the tuned frequency doesn't match what is written on the dial and that my unit can't tune below 9 megahertz or above about 16 megahertz. Lastly, we'll take a look at what is inside. The speaker, light and battery are socketed, which makes opening and repairing this radio much easier. To my surprise, the clock seems to be the internals of a watch. I was hoping it might show a frequency readout, but there's no chance of that. The circuit board is bare bones with two rotary encoders and four capacitors. Behind the circuit board is a small ferrite aerial for medium wave. On the board we can see the JL AC21 BP09743 Bluetooth and USB chip and the 8002D chip as well. The entire radio functionality is done on this BK1198 single chip system. Overall, this radio is amazing value that is tragically let down by an AGC that lowers volume too much during fades and suddenly jumps it back up again for medium wave and FM. It's quite a nice cheap radio, but I don't think I can recommend it for shortwave. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope to see you again soon. Till we meet at the end. Hadeh!